I was told yesterday, I did a podcast interview yesterday, and I was told that I tend to sniff a lot. And so I'm <laughs> very hyper-conscious. Hello, I'm Shane Bybee. I've worked with students for almost 30 years and have spent the last 10 years guiding high school students on their journey to college. One thing I've discovered is that everyone's college experience is different. That's what this podcast is about. What are the things families really need to know about college? Today I'm joined with, with Richard Smith, father of the star, I think it was episode seven, uh, Kira Smith. Um, and Richard uh, has the, here, she's here today to talk with us about the interesting perspective from a parent's perspective who uh, did not was not educated in the U.S. and had to learn about the really simple, straightforward <laughs> college admissions process that yeah. the U.S. has created. So, Richard, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, no, yeah. Glad to be here, and uh, uh, I think it's a very interesting subject. And as you say, I have one daughter who just graduated in May last year and another one that's going to finish this year and then that's our children through the college uh, at least the degree process so that's uh but yeah no i'm uh, i'm uh, what is it i think by blood and by you know genetics i'm an engineer uh, but uh so i did learn it in college in ireland i was born in ireland in uh, dublin ireland and uh, the republic of ireland and uh, spent my time there you know did high school there or secondary school as we call it went to college there and then worked in Europe for three years, based out of Ireland, and then moved here to the States. So I did electrical engineering in college, so I do have, uh, I have my own college woes uh, stories, but you know, I could bore you with later. But, uh, and then I moved here to the States and landed in Milwaukee first, and where I met my wife, and that was uh, 27 years ago or something. So we've been together ever since and having a blast still, which is good. Yeah, but moved a lot of different places. And of course, we came across each other's paths. And uh, my daughters went to school uh, in uh, Texas, uh, where we lived for 11 years as well. And uh, they also, uh, I think both, at least one of them, mm -hmm. uh, went through your prep uh, classes afterwards as well, so that we could have the full American experience, you know, and spend as much money as possible. So, but it's... Uh, and uh, at the moment we're living in Atlanta uh, and uh, just uh, run an engineering and IT group for a, a company, a Dutch company, and we headquartered in Atlanta here. And uh, so I've been in technology uh, management and doing uh, my whole career. So and like yourself, I think I'm at 32 years or something, you know, close enough. So I've been, I've been around for a while. I have more gray hairs, but what can you do? <laughs> so... Um you being educated in, in Ireland, what was the process of going to college, going to university there? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I was just thinking back now, I think it has changed since. I mean, over time, these things evolved. But uh, when I was there, the process was uh, secondary school. You did secondary school. And then the last two years uh, were sort of like the senior years, if you want to call it that. And you basically studied for two years and then uh, nationally, uh, there was two sets of exams. There was honors exams and you know the lower level exams. So the whole country at the end of high school would sit a set of exams, and you had different subjects: maths, English, history, physics, whatever those were. And then out of that, you know, there's a point system. So you got say five points for an A, uh, seven points for an A in maths. It was maths always had an extra credit. Uh, so what you would get from your total results uh, a score, and then depending on what that was. Uh, you then uh, would you apply to colleges, and the colleges would just pick the people with the highest scores, and that's uh, how it went. So there was a lot of huge amount of pressure on those last that last set of exams, the leaving cert, as, as it's called, and it was nationally happening at the same time for everybody, and you then were just competing point to point against uh, everybody. So if, for example, a engineering had uh, 25 points was the minimum entry out of 32 max. Uh, you know, people who had got 32 points could be the first choice if they wanted to. So it was really, I mean, it was it was a national grading system, and uh, you know, yeah, your future was dependent on that set of exams. It was a uh, two test. years of study, you know, two weeks of hell, uh, and then two months of you know waiting for, you know, what's the answer. So uh, I think that's similar. There's some some of those similar pressures here as well, right? But uh, so that's how it was in Ireland, and then you, again, four-year degree course is what I did. But there are lots of different options as well. So 
And you had the you have you have the GC is that what was it called GCSE there or that's that's actually I think the British yeah. system which I'm not. No, I'm that's not in, in uh, that's in in the UK. It's in, in England and the UK. It's uh, different. Okay. I mean, it's it's ultimately the same. There's a secondary. There's a, there's a yeah. There's a the equivalent of those type of exams. The A levels, uh, I think, is what they call them in uh, the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Ireland, we call it the leaving cert. So you're leaving high okay. school and, and getting on to the next thing, either career, college, whatever you're going to do. Okay, and they um, that would then of uh, yeah, it's it's, it's it's one test and <clears throat> the what I was going to ask was. Uh, it left me. So when yeah. you started finding out, like, the process for uh, Kalina and, and Kira to go through this process, they're going to take the SAT how many yeah. times? And they're going to okay, – do you remember how many times they, the girls took the tests? Yeah, at least – I think it would have been twice anyway. I think it was okay. twice. So uh, – and I think that's a – I mean, there was this – yeah, I think it was about twice as, as from what I remember. Uh, and I think their scores end up, you know – being very similar, uh, so I think the test itself, in some ways, is uh, it's probably on the on the day that it, I think they did very well, and uh, I think they were relatively happy. But we said, "Hey, give it another go and just see if this makes any difference," because potentially that difference is going to make some financial impact or some financial mm-hmm. relief later on, right? So that's why you're that's really why we were doing uh, looking at doing that again, and that's. Uh, so again, is it the right thing or wrong thing to do? I mean, I, you know, you would know better than me. I assume you know, some people will do better the next time. Some people will do the same. Some people will do worse, even potentially. I'm all right? about the ROI. I was talking with Kira. She she was pretty sure that OU was one of her top choices, and yeah. I think she probably maxed out. So for her, she maxed out the amount of age she was going to get off of maybe the second score. There's no ROI yes. in doing a third test. Um, yeah. Two two is it seems. I mean, I, most kids I work with probably do two. Uh, tests, but yeah. that's because we try to prep before the first test. A lot of kids get bad advice, and they're told, "Hey, just take the first test cold and see how you do." Well, that's <laughs> what you end up doing yeah. is you end up guaranteeing you're going to take a take another test. Whereas we now have a thing, a one and done club that I I do, where we set out a target score ahead of time, and we're really pushing to hit that target score. And if you okay. hit it, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, now, I, think that's, I, mean, I think that's a, but I think that's an important thing as well because you look at it and say, uh, you know testing and doing, you know, preparing for any test in my mind is a very good idea, right? Mm-hmm. So practice testing, I mean, it's a very good way of studying for anything, right? Uh, and so I do remember back in the past, we could, and when I was in school, you would get, you know, past papers from ver- you know, previous ex- years, so you can actually go and work on those, right? So then when you when yeah. you land in on the day, even the mechanics of doing the test, okay, what's the physical mechanics? I'm going to be sitting where? I'm going to be using a computer? I'm going to be using pen and paper? I mean, all of those things just make you comfortable when you go in and why, you know, you can, you can probably learn a bit about that, just some online, some reading, or go to some classes to do it. But I think that obviously gives you a bit an advantage because you're, you're a bit more comfortable on the day, right? You just reminded me, I remember my freshman year of college, whenever the professor said, all of my previous tests are on file over in the library. If you'll go in and ask for these, you can see all yeah. of my previous tests. And I was like, what? I can look at yep. all of them. That was amazing. You know, we could see exactly what he'd asked on this test the last time and knew what to study. And that's the crazy thing about nowadays. Um, yeah, my eight year old uh, was yep. at home this weekend and he, he did, he decided to try this finger knitting thing where he would do yarn. He's going to make a little bracelet out of yarn with finger knitting. Okay. I have no clue how to finger knit. And he goes, well, I'm going to look up a video on YouTube and figure out how to do it. And so he, he watched the video himself on YouTube, yeah. taught himself how to do it. Then he goes, I want to combine two different colors of yarn. So I'm going to watch this other video. And he taught himself how to do that. And now, now we have, a, you know, 45 yarn bracelets all over the house because that's all <laughs> he spent the weekend doing. Um, well, a couple of things. I do want to plug Kleena. She just won a big award uh, yep. for her set design at OU. Yeah, no, she did. She came first in a national uh, a national competition. Uh, she's actually the, the the online conference is happening right uh, you know, this week as we speak. So okay. she's sitting down doing that, and she's done her acceptance speech and all of that. And I mean, it really is really good. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I saw the drawing. The mock-ups in the drawings were amazing. Yeah, uh, that was yeah. so cool to see that. Yeah, and, gonna, and that was you know, for some of the some of the designs. You end up they end up doing a design. So this is set design. And you end up doing design and it's unrealized but then for the ones that actually do 
you know, become uh, you, you build and you know the, the actors get to act in them. Uh, I mean, those things are really um, impressive. And so yeah, she's really really happy with that. And she's slightly uh, she's had you know been interviewed for on the local paper, been interviewed for you know have to make her acceptance speech and record that. And uh, she's you now she's really really happy. And of course, she wants to use it as. Oh, okay. Can I now use that to try and get a job? You know, when I come out, uh, is that going to help me? I'm sure it's. I'm sure it will, right? But uh, yeah, no, it's really. I mean, it really. Yeah, she's really happy. We're very, really, really happy, and you know, it was uh, uh, the first time we saw them getting awards, which were uh, through the you know, Carroll High, High School uh, theatre program, right? And mm -hmm. it was. It's really cool, you know. Yeah, and I'm, I'm an engineer, and I just you know the world needs art, right? Because it'd be a disaster if it was run by engineers, you know. So. <laughs> well, it's funny see that engineering part of it come out in what they're doing because I mean, that, there's tons of engineering, right? And that set design she did, um, and yeah. what I loved watching was like the models and then the pictures she put up of like the actual production and how how cool it was to see that. Is Kleena? I've got Kira's website focused on the on the on the podcast website. Is Kira doing anything? Does she have a, a website hi highlighting her stuff? Yeah, no, Kalina does. Yeah, I mean, Kalina Smith dot com. She does. She uh, yeah, Kira uh, was Kira, Kira Neve Smith, but uh, Kalina C L I O N A uh, Smith dot com. So yeah, she has a lot of her portfolio up there. So uh, because and, again, and, uh, and I know they're both going to. Um, well, I know, uh, is, is Kira in New York City now? She is. Yeah, no, I, I drove her up there with a car full of stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, at the start, she's just finished her first month there, so. That's really good. You know, she's uh, she's uh, happy and trying to you know trying to get on with her life, right? Mm -hmm. So what is she and, doing? Is she getting? Uh, any... Well, she's doing a lot of. I mean, right now she's doing a lot of contract uh, stuff, and you know, so she's picking up some bits and pieces of uh, work. And, and I know she's, she's. I know she recently got a commission to do some work. We got her to do some paintings yeah. for us here. Yeah, and, and, and then, her that as well. So, so. Yeah, and she's uh, doing some character stuff for uh, for a, a book that I wrote a few years ago as well. So. Oh, wow. So it's just uh, so she's doing that, and she has I know she has a few other things. She's up on the line on a few shops like Etsy cool. and other places as well. So, and then she's also you now walking this walking. Actually, that sounds wrong. She's now you now looking around New York for you know jobs and applying there. So I think she'll she'll she wants to do a mixture. I think of you know something that's a bit more permanent, but also have the flexibility to do uh, commission stuff and art stuff as well. You know, so I think she's uh, guess she's getting launched. So it's it's really good. <laughs> and, and for those who are watching the video, the, there's two pieces of artwork behind you that are, are samples of her work as well as on her website. Yep, there's a, um, this one here, which is a copy of some French type of thing I liked, and then <laughs> over here, a picture of my car. So, Is, um, is, is Kleena going to join her in New York City? Is that the plan? Yeah, that's that's cleanest plan is to be in New York City. You know, I think they'll probably be independent, but uh, okay. yeah, her plan is, yeah, I think she's looking at it right now. And, uh, but yes, I think there's a lot. I think things are going to start opening up there again soon, right? I mean, as all this yeah. coronavirus has you know, messed up that industry, uh, you start even hearing things like CDC are now saying, yeah, for those people who, are, who have had the vaccine, you, it's okay to be together without masks. And I think it's just some of those steps will start opening up mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, shows eventually. So I think that's still a great place to be. So I think they're, they'll, uh, they'll fill their time doing uh, that or you know, some similar stuff or... Uh, but it'll come back at some point. So changing the subject a lot right now, because one of the things we talked about when we first were talking about getting, meeting was just really getting that idea of the perspective coming in as a, you know, being educated in, in Ireland and the perspective and having to learn what the process was going to be here. Um, what was that process for you once you, you know, once you and Mary started doing it? Mary is if I remember correctly, because Mary and I did some stuff, she had she did, she guessed, was a guest speaker in my classroom a couple of times and some stuff yeah. like that. She's U.S. born though, right? She is, yeah. I mean, okay. I, but I, I don't hold that against her. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, yeah. No, she is. I mean, she's she was born uh, in New York actually, and yeah, but we met. Her oh, so walk, barely so. U.S. born, not really. Not <laughs> <anywhere>. <laughs> That's it, just on the edge. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I mean, yeah, she had gone through the whole college uh, experience here as well. Uh, but uh, that's yeah. So when we were when we were starting out, of course, you're going okay. What's you know, there's, a, there's a couple of years before the end of high school for Kira was the sort of when we started thinking what's has, supposed to happen, what has to happen here, and you, know, you start getting into this. You should be, should be doing certain courses because the, depending on what she wants to do in college, does it matter if she you know aligns her courses now? Uh, you know, what are the, so you, you sort of started a few years back to have at least an inkling of there probably is some planning needed here. Uh, 
I think the school itself did a fairly good job of you know, feeding us information, so it, it, at least at a starting point. Uh, so the high school, I think, did a pretty good job of that. But you're looking at this sort of, you know, you start hearing stories of people, oh, we're on, tripping around the whole country on planes, going to see all these colleges and campuses, and, and you're going, I mean, that's just, you know, to me, I'm looking at that, okay, that's nuts, right, in some ways. Uh, and you're, so that, you're saying, is that what you should be doing, or is it not what we should be doing? Uh, are we disadvancing our, our children if we don't, you know, allow them to do anything they want to do? So, I mean, there's, there's all those, I think that dynamic is happening, was starting to happen like a, two years before and or even a year. But then also, the, you know, I had to wait, we had to sort of wait on our daughters to say, this is what I want to do, right? So, you know, part of that was them trying to discover what is it they're interested in doing. Uh, and then, you know, Kira, I think, was the first to, you know, say, okay, the theatre of costume design was the areas they really had an interest, she had an interest in. And so the process with her was the first one. She was our oldest daughter, uh, still is. Uh, but going through the, that with her, uh, we, had, we had all the sort of first time learning to do, really. Uh, and then Kalina on the second, it was our second daughter, she just she just applied to one school anyway, which was OU. And, uh, you know, it was it was a much easier thing, but also that was a sounded like a more much riskier thing to do. So. Should you apply to you know five six colleges? Should you not? Uh, and that process. So I think on on their first and Kira, it was really apply to an, a good few colleges because it seems to be the right thing to do. Uh, whether we felt it was the right thing to do or not, or whether you would say, okay, well if you get into this college, I mean there's this whole affordability thing as well. There's location. There's you know what's the course is like. You know what's the reputation of the universities. I mean there's all this stuff you're trying to balance in your head. Uh, at the same time, trying to say sane and say, you know, the colleges and everything, right? I mean, it's the career afterwards. It's there's a whole there's a whole dynamic that you definitely feel pressured as a parent to go, okay, well, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing enough of this? Or am I doing how much should I leave it to them? Uh, so I'd say yeah. stressful for for uh, for everyone involved, really. And uh, were there what, what were your are you kidding me moments? Like there were things that they had to do, and you're like. I, what you have to do? What? Like, were there any big surprises? But because yeah. you, you, this uh, the U.S. system. Well, I think it's. I mean, you're, of course, you're trying to. You know, on, on the financial side, you're trying to work out. That's one of the key things, right? You're going to work out how does this work? What's you know, what do you need to be doing? What do you not need to be doing? And then the inconsistency across colleges and what they accept as. So now, both our daughters did a number of AP courses, and you go, does it actually count? Does it not count? And even when they went to the oh, you know, University of Oklahoma and their admissions group were saying they weren't counting by default any extra credit for doing AP, anything, right? And you're going, okay, so did we just put our daughters through extra hell for AP when it didn't actually count for the college? Mm -hmm. You're going, okay, was that a mistake? So things, that was probably one of the first ones we're going, okay, this can't, is this right? Didn't, we're, didn't we, we're, we were under the impression that this would help and dot 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 and you actually actually had to we had to actually specifically ask the college by the way don't don't you accept extra credit for you know advanced uh, placement courses and they said oh oh yeah no we can but it wasn't by <laughs> default right and you're looking oh, at this oh moment. yeah yeah it's it's it, it's yeah, so here, you, want, you, you want to hear the latest thing they're doing this is the fun one so yeah. last year they did all this test optional stuff right they they said oh well We'll have an admissions policy because it's being, it's, it's, you know, a year ago right now, SATs and ACTs got wiped out for five months. Yeah. And so they were like, we're not going to have test scores. We still want you to apply. Um, so we'll go ahead and create a, a, te a test optional admissions process. Well, I've heard from parents multiple times in the last couple of weeks, I actually did a blog post on it, where OU is one of them, that they are, if you don't have test scores, they are by default automatically enrolling you in... Um, remedial classes and putting you in classes that you don't need credit for three remedial classes a yeah. reading a writing and a math remedial class now you can test out of those you can offer proof you have to do it but you have to yeah. provide the proof for it but by default they're giving that that's that's nine hours of school guaranteed four thousand dollars right there yeah. four thousand yeah. dollars off the top and and an extra nine hours of classes that aren't going to count for credit that people yeah. aren't aware of that that's a possibility. Now, both students that I talk to, they're already taking dual credit classes, so they're going to get like they're going to get automatically that English, that reading and writing class is going to be taken away, and they're not going to have to take yeah. a, a freshman level English uh, English at, at the college. So that's good, 
But I worry about a lot of students that are going to be, like you said, like, you know, the college, it's a nonprofit business, but it's a business, right? They're, yeah. they're built on matriculating 120, 100 something hours in four years. Yeah. And so anytime a student says, oh, I have this AP class, they actually lose money on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. I think there's, yeah, there, was another, there was another complication. And again, I think this is where when you start looking at you know, each college individually, because it's an individual, there's no standard for how they do it, right? So that means you also have to do a lot more work or you're just gonna be half ignorant in all cases, right? Um, which I think is where we end, probably ended up. But I mean, even in the you know, the questions when you, you know, with, with OU and it may be the same in others, there's X amount of credits that you're gonna pay for. And then there's, you know, you can have unlimited above it. So you can take, you know, this is some you know, crazy, and I'm an engineer, right? You'd have to put it in some spreadsheet and say, does this make any financial impact or not, right? That you can do X more credits, but that's more, that's also more uh, time and class time as well, and certain degrees. And what our daughters were doing, there's a lot of uh, practical stuff because you're putting on shows and designing things. Uh, so you have a lot of time outside of the class. So you have to be careful in how you balance that stuff. So there may look like it's a benefit financially, but you may never be able to take advantage of that benefit that additional, you know, anything above 15 hour credit hours is free or whatever. Oh, but I mean, yeah. you know, there was some, there's some, like, and again, it could be, cha it could be different this year than it was, you know, four years ago when our mm -hmm. daughters started. But those type of mechanics you're, you're sort of stumbling into uh, after, after you've accepted and they're there and you're going, oh, okay, that's something I knew I'm learning afterwards. So I think there's a, there's a few different stages of grief in this whole process, right? <laughs> and it's, uh, so, the, the stuff earlier on, but then even you learn as you go along uh, and then trying to, you know, things around scholarships and how do you apply for them and what are, what's available. And there were even some local ones that we found out about, uh, you know, around, you know, for, just from Fort Worth, for example, and you were, you know, they were one off things, but they were things that you could actually use towards your tuition. And uh, so those, there's, a, there's a bunch of things like that that are left to the individuals to try and mm -hmm. work out themselves and find. And I think there are resources available, but you have to actually hunt. And mm -hmm. I think that's the, I think that's probably the lesson you go is, okay, well, is this a military campaign? I mean, how are you, what are you having to do to work out uh, you know, the right choice or the way you can get stuff in the best benefit? And I think there's just so much, there is a lot to it, right? And even when we were concentrating on only a small set of schools, you know, there's the interview process that's going up, you know, meeting, and I think that was pretty interesting and that was good because you actually get to see you know, again the campus tour but you also get to see uh meet some of the professors and get a vibe for the place so you at least go oh, okay I, i'm my my children will be safe here or be happy yeah. here or whatever that is because that you care about that as well as a parent right so yeah there's a lot of dynamics to it so i wouldn't go through it again if uh, if i had a, given a choice so <laughs> well, they um, so outside scholarships. Did you find a lot of outside scholarship funding, or um, it was one of the well, yeah, not a huge amount because it's it's competitive as well, of course. So I mean, it would be something like uh, you know, do an essay for something on this topic and you know, submit it to this group, and then they're going to have their process on you know, uh, you know how they evaluate and how they score. So uh, both of them did actually get some of those. Uh, I mean, not worth a lot of money, but at least it was some, and it was an interesting thing to say that that it's available. Mm -hmm. So should you try, I mean, it just takes time and effort. And uh, I think you would actually, I think, I mean, I, the advice to me from my side is, you know, you got to maybe pick a limit and say, I'm going to do, you know, this amount, if you can afford to say I have a limit. In some cases, you may have to, you know, I'm going to apply to everything I can because, uh, you know, I need to, and not everyone has different sort of financial circumstances. But I think, you know, there are things out there trying to find them and trying to find the resources where you can at least take a chance and see if it can help you uh, when you get to the, you know, the, the money part of college. Uh, you should be looking at those. And I think it's, but you also have your, you've got everything else to do as well. You've got to finish off your school. You got, <laughs> you know, you may have to, you may have your part-time job. You, you know, there's a lot of different uh, well, things. One of the interesting right? things about those scholarships is that when you get, if you get a merit-based scholarship and it's because, you know, you need the money to close the gap, what actually ends up happening is any need-based grants that you're quali qualifying for, that merit-based scholarship can count against your need-based grants first. Yep. They'll count it against that. And then, so students who are um, going to be you know, financing a lot of college, uh, another scholarship probably won't 
lower the loan amount you're actually looking at. Yeah. It's probably going to lower the, the amount of aid you're going to get from the school directly. That would be grant yeah, aid think, anyway. Yeah, and I think that was one of the things we sort of learned as well is the, you know, what's the total actual, I know, I know I'm harping on money here for a bit, but the, there's an experience part we'll talk about as well, I'm sure, but I mean, what's the, the total cost of that for you mm -hmm. as a as a family or as a student, right? So I think there's the there's the tuition, there's the living expenses, there's the travel, and I think anyone who's looking at this needs to be thinking about that total thing, right? Because not that they're hidden costs, but you're going to, you know, uh, again, what we did is we they went to somewhere relatively local, which was they were based in Dallas. They they the, both went. Well, our daughters went to University of Oklahoma, but once our our youngest daughter, you know, started there. Myself and my wife moved, right? So we moved to uh, to Atlanta, right? So now we've got the travel, you've got this extra travel stuff you have to do mm -hmm. and bringing people home and back and forth. So yeah. I think people have to just you know, look at the total thing that they're getting into mm -hmm. and how they're going to manage that and just to have just to have that full picture uh, uh, because you will look at online as, okay, the, it's X amount of dollars per semester, but then there's that, and there's double that with all the other stuff you have to do, right? <laughs> the cost so of I attendance, think, yeah. Yeah, and I just think that's just the, another and area. the cost of attendance is never accurate. I, one university has an estimated cost of attendance, like for the housing off campus, they estimated at like $9,000 a year because, yeah. you know, $10,000. And at knowing where that university is, there's nothing near campus that is less than $1,200. I, I know one student who was paying $1,200 a month and had four roommates, so that house. That's yeah, how they that were. Sounds like, it that out. sounds like New York money. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, the so I, a little bit of a pivot because you, you talked about the 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 financial benefit. And this is something that definitely, it, you know, you talked about the finances of it, and that's something I'm big on. I I, I don't I, I'm still working to educate myself on all of the nuances of it, um, but to me looking at what your end result is going to be and then measuring how much debt you're likely to have at that point. Yeah. Talking with Kira, she, she made, you know, she, she graduated with no debt. So I've talked to students one, the second podcast the interview that I had is a yeah. student who's at, she's at NYU and Jamie said, she's got right now hasn't graduated yet and has six figures in debt. And yeah. she's, she's going to go to law school because that's her only chance of paying it off. Yeah. Um, and she's majoring in science and technology. Like it's not, she's, yep. I, I was listening to a story yesterday of a lady who's measuring in sociology and the story was all about, you know, and she's going to Temple. Temple's pretty expensive and you're majoring sociology and sociology's, you know, going to lead to a, a job that might pay, I don't know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. Yep. How much debt are you going to have? And that was kind of my side because be, I, I, in talking with you and, and you head up a team of engineers, I'd really like to kind of pivot and talk about that aspect of it because it's not something we've talked about on the podcast very yeah. much. I had one, one president of a company talked about how he hires people and he's a software uh, consulting business as well. Um, so what you, you say you're in IT. What yeah. does, does your company a consulting company? Do you have a products that you produce? What is the, what's the, the yeah, no, actually we do. So it's a, a company's called Vandaland, but we, we, we make airport baggage systems and we also make parcel systems for, for Amazon, FedEx, UPS. So we're having a huge whale of a time at the moment on, on one <laughs> side and on the airport side, it's a lot quieter than it was, but it's coming back. Uh, so a lot of time we basically, you know, conveyor system, we have engineers and mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, we have people who write software uh, and we basically design the whole thing. We will, you know, we have manufacturing as well. And then we go and install these huge systems like you're talking so your a lot of your packages will come to our equipment you know, we're like number one in baggage in the world so we we have like 60 percent of the world's baggage comes through our systems so we have a lot of stuff going on and then i'm sort of uh, part of obviously the north american uh, group but when it comes to the you know the college i mean it's and this is the thing so i'm an engineer and that's what i have so i know that route come out of engineering so if you've got a mechanical engineering degree or an electrical engineering degree we will basically start people at 60k depending on the location but say in atlanta it's going to be 60,000 a year when you don't know anything you've come out of college fresh and uh, I mean, what we're looking for is you know two different things well right now we still want you to have a degree uh, but we also want you to be a sort of you know a human that we can talk to and deal with so there's the skills part and the behavior part i mean and those things are equal important to us because we can't we don't want to bring in you know, people who have a bad attitude or people who are not going to put in effort. I mean, there's, 
so we have a really balanced between the skills. Uh, but one of the trends we're seeing is, you know, we're, we, we automate a lot of stuff, even of our own processes. So we're sort of thinking about, do we actually need someone to have a four year degree or not? Uh, because we're getting a bit more sophisticated with our tooling. And we're going, actually, you know what, maybe associates degree are probably fine. And even on the software side, I mean, to be honest, we're playing with the whole concept, do you actually need a degree at all, right? Because you know, if you can show uh, if you can show that you've done, you know, first of all, we can skills test people. Uh, mm -hmm. The technology and the software side changes so much all the time, right? What was trendy five years ago as far as tooling and software is now changed. It's going to change in two years time again. So a lot of people are having to relearn all, all their skills all the time. So if you can actually find someone fresh with a brain, right, uh, who's enthusiastic about it, you know, that's a, one area we're seeing people who are you know, re-educating themselves in software development, if that's something you care about, right? But it's, uh, and then we go, you know, what's your last, uh, what you did last and what you did in the last couple of jobs, so what's your experience is much more important to us. It's becoming much more important to us than what's your qualification as such, right? For some legal things, there's needed, you need a certain qualification and for some state license things we do. But for a lot of it, it's, we really look at the last couple of jobs you did and said, what's your experience? Does that up, can that help us as a company? And uh, I happen to be in a weird situation that I don't know. I know some of the big colleges here, but I don't know most of the colleges in the country. So when someone says Purdue, I think chickens and, you know, it's a few <laughs> other things. But it, it also means that, you know, the, the reputation that comes with a college is sometimes completely lost on me, right, personally, mm -hmm. just because I don't, it's not, it's not what I sort of, grew up with it. I'm not a big sports person. So there's, so it's really funny to, to not funny, but you look at, I think it's a, uh, it's one of those things that I don't think about where you go uh, for us after a couple of years of experience is not important. It's what you've done. So I think, you know, to me, I got through college, I got my licensed, I got my degree, right? I've, to me, it's a license to get on with my career, which is what I wanted to do. I, you know, for college, it can be a nice learning experience. But for me, it was like, get out the door, so I can get on with working. And so so a lot of what we do as well is, okay, what have you done recently? What are your skills? What have you learned in the last couple of years on the job? And that will be, you know, help, help us decide whether you're a fit for our company. And the fact that you've done some qualification, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15, it all it becomes more and more irrelevant mm -hmm. uh, for what I see anyway. Uh, so I think it's just it's just something to keep in mind when people are I think are going to college. It's hard to have that perspective from the you know the entry part of it, but on the outside of it is what are you going to use this for, right? Mm -hmm. you know, what's it for, and you know how will you uh, enjoy your life afterwards? Is it going to help you? Is it going to help you financially? Is it going to help you? Even if it doesn't help you financially, does it give you skills that you are going to be able to use and and love your life afterwards, right? So there's a there's a bit of yeah, uh, and I, I was thinking about it just before this. I was going. If someone says to me, you know, "The best years of my life were in college," I go, "Ooh, that's fairly sad, right?" <laughs> you could have had a good time, but if that's the best, and you've got fifty more years to live, <laughs> I, you know. Anyway, so I'm good. Right. I mean, it's it's, I'm, it's I'm a good time. Up. Yeah. No, it's a good time because you, you have no responsibilities. So there's lots of good times. But yeah, definitely. Well, that's, I think that's what I'm seeing in the certification programs. Like, so if you want to be a nurse, if you want to be an engineer, yeah. where there's going to be some type of certification, some type of verification that you're capable of doing what you say you're doing. Yeah, uh, Even for teachers, right? If you're a teacher or something like that, where you're going to have to have a certification, a license. Uh, for places, for schools where... Your, where your connections are going to be more important, so you're in business or something like that, then the connection. And, and talking with Kira about going to OU, and, and she was because I remember when I found out she was going to OU to do costume design. That way, I, I didn't yeah. expect that. And people don't realize, I think, that Carnegie Mellon at the great universities has a fantastic drama department too. You know, I mean, it's yeah. th that realize. So for a, a program where you're going to need the connections, that's going to be bigger. And that's one of these Kira and I talked about. She she made the comment that. In uh, going through OU, she got a lot of connections in Midwestern theaters, but yep. not as many in the on the East Coast. So that was a factor for her in developing. It. But she also came out of a program where she was able, like you're saying, to say, "Here is this." She designed that costume, that that artificial skin that had the tattoo. Yeah, on the it tattoo. For, yeah. For, for for the costuming, she said, "I was able to design this. This is how I. This is my process. This is what I did." And so coming out of it with those, that 
to me is the big thing coming out of it with huge actually things like you can say this is what I did uh, and I've talked with students that went to University of Boulder and got a degree in right. finance and are at Fidelity now and so there's there's opportunities um, so how close are you when and you're building your team how close are you to those entry level uh, hiring decisions yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a, uh, not exactly there. So, but sure. yeah, you know, I've some of my team teams are the ones who are will be hiring those interns. But I actually okay. meet with every one of them myself uh, as an introduction because you know I started when I started, and I think I mean you talk about experience like Kira had with the actual doing as the, as clean as it has with the actual set design. I mean that ex, that practice that you're having during that college time period is really useful to see for an employer and the equivalent in some other things is internships, right? So, you know, we look at these, uh, we see this internship, first of all, we want to test, we want to see them in action because we're hiring a lot of people. We want to, you know, we want to use it as a, you know, you know, a, a buy, a try before you buy uh, in some <laughs> ways, right? It also is a great idea, an opportunity for them to, again, get some experience on their resume before they get out the door. Because, you know, the fact is that if you do see someone with a, people qualify or uh, people applying, if we see someone has done an internship uh, somewhere, we go, actually, no, you definitely have a positive reaction to that. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, you got to remember that some people can't do that because it, sometimes it costs them money and they can't afford to do that. They have to actually have a, they have to get some job because they need to pay for their college, right? So, yeah, you know, you can't take it as just, you know, we don't want to take it just on, on face value like that, but it's, it also, it does give a positive because it's, it's, it's sort of real world experience that you're getting to come along with your education. And if you can align those things, it's a real benefit. And like for you know, a curious uh, situation, talking about connections, you know, connections are interesting. I mean, I mean, connections can be uh, good, but it's all about timing in some ways, right? That connection has to have some reason to need you at a certain time in a certain place. And as they cycle around over, you know, you may not, the timing may not work out, right? So it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, I would say, uh, I wouldn't rely on it as a, as a process for your, you know, it's, I think it's a necessary thing, but yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I have like, you know, I don't know many connections, but you know, do I know any of them really? I mean, I know, actually I do know a good few of them, but I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I think it's, it can be overplayed a bit in my opinion, just because it is then a matter of timing of like comedy, right? It all is going to be a matter of timing and whether each other can benefit from that. Um, but I, you know, when we go back to the sort of the first question, you know, I mean, uh, we do, we just see it as a great opportunity to give people an opportunity and for all, you know, for these people starting out and, you know, they get to see us, they get, we get to see them, you know, I'd say 60% of them work out and we, and we hired them. And then we have, we do have the odd ones that, you know, during the, you know, the, the sort of training we're doing, they're on their phone and in their first professional in the first professional situation they're on their phone when someone is talking and we've marched some of those out the door and uh, <laughs> come on yeah. you know as so. listened to, as listened to J a joe rogan podcast that and he was talking about how and I, i've started doing this too on mine like i caught myself a couple times glancing at phones and stuff like when i'm in it so my, my phone is not even in the room when yeah. i do this anymore it's i think that's a, that's to be be in that moment. just one of those things you know like mm -hmm. It's, yeah, but, it's so, but it's, I mean, it is that, I mean, so that whole combination of, I think the, I mean, you really want to, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully what you're doing in college is something you actually want to be doing because you see it as a path to somewhere else, right? Because uh, like I said, it, college is such a small slice of your life. It might be during a part of your life when it's very formative and, you know, alcohol becomes available, you know, so it's all very <laughs> exciting, right? But it's, uh, you know, there's, you know, again, just my opinion, right? But I think there's, uh, it, to me, it wasn't the end. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a part of a way of getting, you know, true to the next phase of mm -hmm. stuff I wanted to be doing. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, I mean, that's just, a, just my perspective. One of the things that's been kind of predicted to shake up, especially that software engineering kind of world, is Google coming out with their certification programs that they have. Yeah. Are you are you starting to see anything like that happening in your world where the certifications can, you know, we had the coding boot camps for a long time, but those yeah. seem to not have gotten the traction. Um, Devlin talked about them a little bit. What are you seeing? Yeah, so uh, again, most of ours on the sort of more mechanical electrical engineering, our software group is growing, but it's uh, it's sort of starting out. But I, you know, I personally did a lot of software in my background my, myself uh, way back when. My, my brother, who was a mechanical engineer, 
uh, he qualified like a year after, or sorry, a year before I did. Never did a mechanical design. His life went straight into software, right? Uh, and so, if you look at, you know, if, if you've looked at him, obviously he's in, he's in, or now he's in management and all this sort of stuff. But if you looked at him as a practitioner, you got a mechanical engineering degree, which is nuts and bolts and designing things, and you're over here writing software. You know, why would I hire you, right? Well, it turns <laughs> out he's good at writing software, right? So, how do you prove that? And I think the you know certificates and all that, I think that sort of stuff is one way of doing it. And uh, I think that, that there is definitely a future where, like I said, I think you, know, no, you want to know someone is qualified. You need to have some independent verification, as you say, because uh, we'll post a job and you'll get a lot of applicants and you're trying to sift in some way. So that first filter is going to be, right now it's, uh, what's their degree, right? You know, it's probably, the, you'll probably go, oh, okay, you're probably, you know, I'm not doing people a very good service, but at the end of the day, you've got 50 resumes on your table for one particular job. Uh, because it's not that there's not, there's more jobs in some of this tech stuff, but people have the ability to apply, apply on mass. So they're, they're in a job and they're going, here, I'm going to apply to these jobs because LinkedIn is feeding me information and I can just press buttons easily. So you end up with opportunist mm -hmm. applications, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the people who are not working necessarily, but some of that, some of that. So now you're going to try and use some filtering mechanism. And uh, right now the filtering mechanism is still going to be on, you know, it might be what company did you work for in the, in the past, but most companies aren't big name companies. But if you do have a big name company that can help in some of our situations. Uh, but that, then it depends on the hiring manager, the recruiters, there's so many layers that people have to get through uh, to have their resume or their LinkedIn profile actually you know, flying something interesting because you're trying to filter it out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the, you know, getting to, you know, getting to a point where, you know, any certification stuff, is that going to help? I mean, I, so I personally can continue to do education. I got to continue to do some courses. I just finished one on design thinking about you know, three months ago. And I did one on R programming at one point, just out of mm -hmm. curiosity, but it actually helped in, you know, some conversation, some companies, you know, wrongly chose me for as one of our candidates, but they found that on LinkedIn, they found that certification that I had done something. And this was a data scientist course, and I was just doing it for you know, general uh, knowledge. Uh, but the, now they start, people start pinging me because I showed that certificate from, in this case it was Coursera. So it's you know, some of these online Udemy, I mean, there's, there's some that are a bit more, uh, <clears throat> a bit more, I say, I would say have a bit more reputation than others, a better reputation, but that helped someone uh, find my resume <clears throat> on LinkedIn. So you go, okay, uh, is that, did it, did I get my value out of that? Probably just by having those few connections mm -hmm. attempt to say, you might be an interesting candidate for us. So what uh, do you think of the Coursera and the, and the Udemy courses? Uh, they're, uh, they're incredibly patchy, right? So I think you have, so I, everyone has a different way of learning as well, right? So I mean, some people, I mean, I read a lot, but I also, again, like you're like with the, the yarn on the fingers, right? We all use YouTube to solve all our problems, right? And I do that a lot. But uh, so some of the courses, when I start a course, it's really like, you know, if I can test it, I'll first of all, listen to the person, right? Can, am I going to be able to look at and listen to this person's voice, you know, for, you know, 16 hours, 20 hours? So there's, there's a few criteria I'm using just to go, I mean, do I, do I feel any sort of connection to this person, right? That's presenting mm -hmm. the course, right? So say if there's a human involved, which usually are better. Yeah, so you're, you're doing, I'm doing some criteria like that, good, right or wrong. And then you go, I mean, I found some, some very good ones and I found the ones that I just stop, you know, after a couple of days, cause they're just gone off the, you know, just, they haven't worked for me. Uh, so I think there's, some of those are, are uh, patchy, but there are some really good ones, but I, I did recently did some game development. So I said, I'm going to learn how to do game development, right? Cause it's programming <laughs> and I like programming. I do it as a hobby still. So I've happened to found, find somebody on YouTube, uh, Jason Wyman is his name, and I liked his presentation and I was able to sample a few of his uh, short half hour, uh, you know, YouTube courses and they were free and then, but that hooked me into something I paid $500 to do a course, which was a bit more intensive and a bit bigger and it helped me. But it, that was like, you were able to sample, do some shopping, do some window shopping, and then say, oh, okay, I like the way they present. I like the way they're, the level of the information they're giving. And, uh, you know, and I posted that proudly, even though I'm out in the world for 
30 years and I'm not going not gonna to probably become a game developer, but um, <laughs> I probably posted that certificate up on LinkedIn as well mm-hmm. and said, you know, you know and, and because of that, I, I, I get some uh, at least initial offer, initial contacts about, oh, we're looking for game developers. I mean, they wouldn't <laughs> hire me, but I mean, still, right? <laughs> It's, uh, I think that continuous education and those certificates, mm-hmm. you know, if you pick the right thing, they can definitely be useful, uh, even if it's attracting attention in a crowded you know, marketplace, for example. Well, um, pivoting way back to something you mentioned, and I, I, I wanted to talk about it then, but I did. I passed by it. You mentioned that K- Kira is doing uh, some illustrations for you yes. and on, a, on a book you've written. Yes. So what book did you write? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll go back. I have to give my wife credit first. So Mary, um, written uh, my wife had written about five, no, five or six books that she published, mm-hmm. uh, and she did that. You know, in the you know after you know, in the first you know two thousand two thousand and ten re- region, and I, mean, I saw her through that whole process, and they were published by an actual publishing house, and you know dot dot dot. So it was really really, and that was a tough process, right? I saw that process, mm-hmm. and and so uh, so year a few years later, so I think in two thousand and 14 or something I said okay you know I'm maybe I can try this and see because just as an intellectual exercise to see you know so then first of all I think okay what can I write about uh, so I come up with the idea of you know small snippets of advice for someone who's new to management and business right you know about you know the dangers of you know climbing ladders you know passive aggressive people you know the good stuff enjoying how to celebrate I saw very short short chapters and I just uh, so it's a thing I know, and it's called People, and it's how to manage them and yourself effectively. That's the subtitle. Uh, so it took about you know 2017, I finished it. So it took four or five years, actually. Uh, no, so I started a bit earlier. But it was like, after I've gone, it was, a, it was just an achievement. I, I, if I can finish something, you know, Mary obviously helped edit it and you know, keep me honest and <laughs> give me advice on it. And then at the end of it all, I, I finished it. Now, self-published it, so what you can do on Amazon now. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one's bought it, so that's good, you know. But uh, <laughs> a few people have bought it, but not too much. But it was, it was one of those things. Just go. I mean, how do you keep yourself challenged over the years to do something new and interesting? Uh, and so that's that was that was part of the drive. And I also then got to feel a bit of uh, the pain that and the effort my wife had gone through with her writings. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think what she produced was a lot better than what I produced. But uh, so, but now because uh, and I've actually given I've. I've not forced it on my team, but I've given it out to a number of people in my group who wanted to. I said, if you want to know how my brain works, it's in that book, right? That's how I work. That's how I think. Uh, but then it turns out a lot of people don't read these days. So I said, well, you know what? I'm going to make some illustrations for it. And uh, of course, I have no talent. So, but Kira, my daughter, has talent. And as is, as is Kleena, in case she watches this. Sorry, Kleena. Uh, but, so she's helping with some characters and then also. Uh, also working with uh, an animator to say, can we animate some of these as maybe car- cartoon stills? Oh, cool. So trying to uh, trying to just do a few things, and it's also for me, it's also trying to say, you know, if I can help some people get started. So there's a there's a music person who does music. I'm talking to uh, someone who does uh, you know visual effects, uh, and Kira who's doing the character uh, concepts and. You know, just I mean, it's a it's somewhat it's a, a it's a passion project in some ways, but it's also it also I think it gives allows some of these people who are starting out to say, oh, okay, I worked on this thing that was a published yeah. book that had this you know uh, knock on thing. So I think that's a has some um, some things they can. Talk. I was talking with a, a student, a, a sophomore in high school, a couple of weeks ago, and she said, I really want to write screenplays, and I yeah. said, and I, went, I was like, cool. Um, what's your what's your blog? And, and let me and let me see what you've written. And she, and she was just shocked. I hadn't thought about that. I was like, there's nothing, there's no barrier to entry anymore. Yeah. Uh, you, if, if you're some joker who has, you know, met a lot of kids that have gone to college, you can start a, start a flipping podcast for yeah. <laughs> less than $100. You yeah. know, there's no barrier to entry on anything anymore. So, yeah. you know, it, the idea that that's all, it's so cool. And the fact that you're still taking uh, uh, developing a programming certification courses and stuff. Is, yeah, is, vacation courses awesome. like it, yeah. What was it? Someone used this term. It wasn't me. I was used against somebody else, but by presence. But it was uh, someone who's done. Like if you see a resume with a thousand course or you know someone with tens of courses on it, we call them you know educational tourists, right? <laughs> and, uh, but it's. I mean, to me, it's that. That's. I mean, that's, that's that's the thing of the continuum of. Like I said, we're talking about college, but in college, you know, just 
people need to be looking at the rest of life, right, and saying, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, yes, it's right in front of you, this college thing you're doing now, right, and that's probably all you can think about, but, you know, you know, there's goals in the end of it. I mean, how is that going to translate into you know something that you you're wanting to do and can do and will be willing to do for years? But you also, I mean, also I say that at the same time, uh, I happened to engineering and then pretty much you know follow this traditional engineering path, do engineering, run a team, manage dot dot dot. Uh, but there's also people pivot in their careers a lot. So my wife had five or six different, completely different careers. Uh, coming out of college, but uh, I think journalism is what she did in college and journal, or uh, I'm going to get it wrong, she'll kill me, but it's definitely journalism related and law uh, in some ways. But then it was, you know, she pivoted and did many different things and uh, that's also possible, right? So it's also not necessarily the last thing you're ever going to decide to do or or be, right? Uh, yeah. What you decide to do in college, so. What, what she, what's, what's Mary doing now? Uh, so she works for a company and she's doing technical writing uh, okay. and it's a finance type company so so fintech if you want to call it that that's exciting okay. stuff but yeah so she's she's doing that and of course we're all working still working remotely for the last year because <laughs> of covid which will end maybe, at some point maybe the lights at the end of the tunnel maybe it is have you, have, have you had yeah. a chance to get a vaccine yet are you on the list now I'm, I might look old, but I'm not old enough yet. So uh, <laughs> me, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So, there's, I mean, but yeah, but you're right. I mean, we, because we're in the air, airport business and airline business with the baggage, we, we actually watch these numbers, right? So we're mm -hmm. about a, about fifty percent back of what it was at its peak uh, from 2019, as far as people traveling. So that's it. It went down to four percent at one point, wow. right? Yeah, I remember seeing those and, numbers. And uh, so it's 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 coming back, and then as you say. You know, you know, CDC says if you have a vaccine and you're vaccinated, you can you know, stand, you know, be with other people who are have been vaccinated mm -hmm. without masks. So those type of things are, as you say, I think there there there's light yeah. there, and we'll get there. So, um, so in management, other than your own book, are there any really great books that if a student, you know, someone's uh, if they've got their career started but they're looking at that management track, what's a book that that they should read or that would give them good insight? Uh, yeah, that's a tough one, right? Because yeah. Uh, you know, I have opinions about books. It's like the word book, blink, right? You know, so someone wrote a book. Everything you need to know about the book is in the title. It gets <laughs> boring to read it, right? So again, you know, what is the, what's the right thing? I, I mean, the, the Peter Drucker was one of the, you know, he's basically, you know, uh, author, a business author for years and years. He's actually now not, no, he's dead at this point, right? But he was writing for decades and decades. And he has a very practical approach so Peter Drucker is his name, and he's got tons of books. But it's, you know, I read a, a whole chunk of them. Just and again, he happens to think the way I think, and so again, it's hard. You know, it's like I'm reinforcing my own bias, if you want to call it that, in some ways, right? But for me, that you now there was a, that's a practical approach. I mean, work is why are you doing work? I mean, so, there's work in this home, and you know, they mix as well. Like obviously, they're all mixing now. But I liked his books, and I thought they were really good. Uh, there are some books on leadership that. You know, I re read hundreds of these things, but uh, and one doesn't stand out at the moment that I could uh, <laughs> leaders eat last. I think that was a pretty good one as well. Uh, and again, it's, it's just, you know, to me, it's, uh, you know, uh, you know what, what would I say? What type of leader would I be? I mean, uh, you need to take care of your people because you know, they're, they're what go we're going to make you successful. And you can, if you make them successful, you're going to be successful as well. And that really is the core of what I do, right? And then there are practical things. You just have to make decisions quick enough, right? There are times you may not have the right information, but you need to go, right? Decisions have to be made. Let's move, right? Let's mm -hmm. help each other, make decisions as quick as you practically can, and you won't get it right all the time, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I think I sum summarize my whole management philosophy, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Don't, well, don't um... be an ass. Don't be an ass, you know? So. <laughs> That's... <laughs> I've, I've had that conversation with a student about some other stuff the other day. We're about to have a podcast talking about just the whole, that, that I don't know, what the, the student experience uh, is coming up pretty soon. So um, one of my students has become a really uh, activist uh, in the world, and we're, I'm going to talk to her about some things. So, yeah, but don't be an ass. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds no, like a new, new title yeah. book. Yeah, I do, actually. In my, in my book, there is a chapter which says, <laughs> I can say the word ass. Can I say the word? What can I say on here? I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, one, of the, one of the chapters of the books, well, all the assholes, please stand up. And it's it's my theory that they make themselves known, right? 
No, you don't even have to ask them, right? But they will just make themselves known, and then yeah. that's okay because then you can do, you can work out how to deal with them, right? But it's just <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, like the, I mean, the, 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 you mentioned about activists, and I was actually watching some of your other podcasts, and I thought, well, no, there was the one with a musician who mm -hmm. started uh, went three years into college doing mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember yeah, exactly, right? Uh, but then you know jumped into a completely different world. Uh, and you know, found a you know, some of the passion and a, and, and a, a talent uh, that he had, right? I mean, yeah, those are things that can happen uh, mm -hmm. to people, right? And it's you know, it's a, you, it, yeah. you can't foresee them, right? And then so, I don't know where. Like, two weeks ago, he decided he and his, his girlfriend decided to move to Arizona because yeah. they're young and they can. Yeah, so. and it, yeah, and that's uh, there are choices you yeah, there's choices you can make, and uh, I mean, that's really cool because that's you know, I don't, I don't think there is. Uh, you know, you, you, sh you don't have to be, uh, I was going to say you don't have to be married to one particular thing, but you know, it's, I think there are options and I think if you get opportunities and, and you're in a position to take them, then lucky you and mm -hmm. should try, yeah. right? Well, are there any things we've, I mean, things that we were, when we were talking about originally and talking about the perspective, any things we didn't touch on that you think would be great, good information for parents to know? Yeah, I mean, and again, everyone's situation is going to be, you know, individual, right, for sure, right? But I think there's... There is. Uh, I still, when I look back, I say, what would we have done differently, right? We would have. Uh, I think we would have yeah, definitely concentrated on some a few less colleges, right? We would just, you know, make some choices, right, and say, you know what? Here's our range. Here's our limit of you know, location, or here's the type, and you know, uh, just that could have made the experience just a bit less uh, hectic and less troublesome. And then you go, okay, mm -hmm. so now you've made some sort of core decisions. I mean, it's so obviously it's beneficial to have really good grades, right, or good enough grades to get in, so that if you do concentrate, uh, at least your your chances of getting in are are you know near a hundred percent. I mean, that's what you want to go for because I do, and I have friends as well who've you know their kids got accepted to various things, and then oh, okay, we can give you a grant of or uh, we can give you a loan of four thousand dollars towards your you know. <laughs> Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. Okay, so that's a dead end for some people. So again, I think you know, having keeping your feet on the ground in some ways is important, right? And keeping a level head about about something. Uh, someone said, and I'm not, I'm not saying this is I subscribe to it completely, but if someone offers you a full ride somewhere, don't turn it down, right? I'm okay. Is that you know? It seems like uh, it seems to me that you know having a you know. Uh, some opportunity like that someone gets right i mean that's that's sort of it's not priceless but we know we know the number right i i read about a someone a parent was asking one of the forums the other day the student had qualified had been had been offered a nsa national security agency scholarship which i didn't know existed yeah. didn't know that was a thing no, no. um for a full scholarship all tuition paid books all of that so you had you had living expenses still but everything else was paid for four years in exchange for six years of working for NSA. So you've got a full scholarship and yeah. you're guaranteed a government job when you graduate that you only have to do from six for six years. Coming from someone who, you know, did an ROTC scholarship to pay for college and then had an yeah. eight year military commitment after that, that sounds like a heck of a deal. <laughs> I'm like yeah. so you'll have yeah. an amazing job experience to lean on afterward. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, because it gets very heady during that whole process of applying, right? And and depending on your economic circumstances, you know, you may feel you can stretch, you know, further and further and further. But, you know, if you're, you know, do you want to end up, if you can avoid it, of course, no, you know, if you, if you don't want to have a lot of debt, right? Come out mm -hmm. of college, if at all possible, because it, it just, it's, it's a downer, right, in some ways, right? But mm -hmm. it does, it does uh, limit you or add stress as well but it's a practical thing that does happen but it's trying to keep that to a, a minimum is probably worth your while thinking up up front and mm -hmm. and you know you look at it you know to me like i said i think there's there's a lot of good places to go for uh, your education uh, it doesn't always have to be a degree it can be various different levels technical it can be you know various different things that you might want to do that might just suit you and your learning style and your you know your what you want to do better but you know, trying to keep your head out of the, the clouds in some ways is hard and trying to mm -hmm. resist that I think is uh, important because you can still get uh, what you want out of it in, in, in a number of different ways of doing it. 
Uh, I think the you would love to have uh, the, the system in Ireland was a bit too rigid. Here it's you know so far it's it's so free and open everywhere. I mean that's also a, a, a you know having to deal with that is just uh, is also another sort of stressor. So and that's why I'm saying if you could limit yourself to uh, not the whole world or not the whole country potentially you have a you have a better chance of uh, going through the process smoother and with less uh, heartache. And then also I think there's the getting people ready for when you actually do get into college, right? So if you do go to a college and you're starting somewhere that first year, uh, actually I have an intern who works for me and I was just talking to him before this. So he he was uh, tennis is what he uh, was expecting to have help pay for college. Uh, he got an injury. I, mean, I just actually talked to him this morning. I said, tell me your experience because I'm, I'm on this podcast later. So tennis, he didn't pay much attention to school at all, right, in classes because he didn't have to. Uh, got an injury in, you know, second last year in high school. Suddenly had to care because he now couldn't get a scholarship because he wouldn't be able to play. Mm. Uh, so he managed to work hard and then got accepted into, I think, Mississippi, Mississippi State, where his parents had gone in the past. Lands in there. You know, they were worried about him being social. He joined lots of clubs. Ended up, and he had a scholarship, a lot of scholarship money. He ends up having a good time in the first year without realizing it or not paying attention to it. His GPA drops below the threshold, loses all his scholarships, You know, ends up having to pay for a semester mm -hmm. out of his own pocket, then has to go work for a year as an intern to get back in mm -hmm. to the college with scholarships again. And so he's doing fine, but he had a, he had a big wake up yeah. and well, he's just, you know, it cost it cost him a lot of it cost him a year, which is a year well spent. He did an internship, so it's still okay, right? Uh, but it also cost him. You know, and I can imagine the parents in the all the stuff, <laughs> the conversations that might have happened around that. Uh, so uh, I was going to ask you about that because I, I talked to a lot of parents who, you know, the, the student comes home at semester, the fall semester. Yeah. And they have that 2.8 GPA, and mom and dad have a conversation about we're not paying for a 2.8 GPA. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think – I'm guessing with knowing your daughters, that wasn't a conversation that had to happen at the Smith house, if I'm guessing. No, right. no not at all. No, it's just uh, – <laughs> and, and I think that's, a, that's another one as well, right? It's the – again, it depends. I mean, it's the school district that we were in in Texas, right, is obviously, you know, it's they push very, very hard, which is, uh, you know, Good and bad, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So you know, both of them came out of there with, you know, great uh, numbers and great results, and also as nice people as well, which is really, which is really good. And more as a, just uh, more important. Uh, so no, they never had to, you know, think about that in college. But even even during college, you're looking at it and we're going, okay, does it? What does it? You know, in my mind, I'm thinking, what does it matter, right? You know, I'm, you know is, is a four out of college, you know. Is this going to be indicate that you're a great person and you know, people will want to work with you? Or what does it get, what does it actually give you? So they did very well and you know, and they're great. You know, we never had that conversation, but it also then is you know what are you marching for and what's the you know I wasn't I mean, I'll be honest I was a what was it in Ireland I would be a C student I hated hated school hated college I didn't like to be there I wanted to just get out uh, but I got through it and again is that an indicator of your ability or you know, how you're going to be able to work with people you know it isn't it isn't there isn't one metric that defines that person right so i think there's a you know there's an arms race there sometimes and there's a peer pressure and all of that and you know but we all need to just get over ourselves you know sometimes just uh, no, that, that arms race of college admissions is definitely a thing going on it's, good. it's getting worse right now with uh gpa becoming a bigger factor because test scores are becoming less less significant yeah, and no, that's, and that's an unfor <clears throat> it's an unfortunate thing, right? And I think there's, uh, but I think one of the things I know the girls uh, both had, uh, uh, you know, interviews, right? So the, mm -hmm. you know, Kira had an interview with the school of drama and met professors, and they're trying to actually work out is this person actually you know want to be here, passionate about this? And I think that was a really I'm not sure you know if I know sometimes that those happen through essays, and I'm not sure of the mechanisms everywhere. But that in-person thing uh, was really useful, mm -hmm. I thought, for both sides, right? And, you know, you know, Kleena went there a year later interviewing with the same people, right? And they're going, like, what are you doing here, you know? And you're only here because your sister's here. And she goes, 
no, I just happened, you know, we both happened to have the same similar passion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she did her interview and she got to, you know, meet some of the people that she's been, you know, you know uh, her professors have been with her, you know, four years and uh, they get to see her and go, actually, no, this is a very capable, yeah. poised person. Uh, the interviews uh, are critical. I, I wish there were more of them. Be, and not the, like, so what happens right now so much of the time, it's an alumni interview. And most of the time, an alumni interview is really just about having good relationships with the alumni. It has nothing to do with the admissions yeah. process. But I had uh, interviewed a G- Gabby Smith. Gabby's out in California at the um, College of Fine Arts. I think, and she was she, our I think she was our neighbor at one point. Which, yeah, same. Uh, last name Smith. So, I mean, uh, yeah. maybe there's a relation. I don't know. I'm not, I know there's no. Uh, but Gabby, um, she talked about in her interview, like she had two or three interviews, but she realized in one of the interviews that even if that school accepted her, she would not go there because yeah. the, the energy, the, the dynamic was not good. And, and that was, she realized that was not a place for her. So the interview, it's, it's like a job interview, right? Yep. The same yep. thing happens there. It's, it's, it's great that the, you want to impress the employer, but you also want to find out, is this a place I want to work? And spend yeah, and 60 hours a week doing stuff. It was reminding me, I did, uh, I interviewed for a position in, uh, for a company in Dallas uh, at one point uh, when I was still living there. And uh, I walked, I knew this company because my company I was with, I dealt, dealt with them in the past. So I knew of some of the people in there and we had some legal fights with them, but you know, they were, they were looking for someone, someone to help lead uh, their group. And I walked into that company and there was a lot of uh, cubicles and there was a lot of people in there and no noise, not a single sound, oh, wow. no one was talking. And I, and I just went and I asked them, I said, what's wrong with this company, right? And they go, yeah, we know, you know mm. we're trying to fix it. But it was, you know, that, that's just part of that whole, if you're gonna be someplace in college or in work, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you wanna be with people you wanna be with, right? Mm-hmm. And in an atmosphere that's good and, and it's, uh, and that's sort of, of course, I think that's, it is an important aspect, so. Man. Thank you so much for an hour of your time doing this. Yeah. A little over an hour of your time now, man. I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna yeah, wrap up. More than welcome. Um, that's awesome. It's, it's such great information, great perspectives on things. Uh, thank you so much for doing it um, and and uh, and being here today. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I think the podcast. I mean, I looked at the series you're doing, and I think it's really it's useful, right? I mean, I think it's if it helps some people, and you know, I, I watch some of the other ones you've did, and I think it's a. Uh, it's good content, and I think it'll you know if it helps Thank a few you. students, it helps a few parents, and I think it's a it'll, it's it's worthwhile. So I appreciate it. Yeah, it's you. great that you're doing it. So I applaud Thanks. you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hey, have a good day. Bye. You too.